Hello everyone! In this video, we're finally doing it. We're starting to pose our character. So, um, first of all, before we start positioning anything, I want to have a bit of a look at how exactly we are going to layer these on the timeline. So across everything, uh, probably a good idea while we do this uh, to make sure that we have uh, our timeline a little bit longer. So at this point, we can probably just take this tab here and drag it over to the bottom so just so we have a longer timeline. So something like this would probably work best. Right now, my scene is very short. I can make sure that it is uh, quite a bit longer. So um, there's no such thing as too long for the moment. We can always reduce it if we have too much room. Um, so let's make that, here the scene, scene length. Let's make that about 350 frames for now and we'll adjust if need be. So now that we've done that, of course, the next step will be to extend the exposure of our character all the way to the end. So you want to go all the way up to that last frame and press F5 on both your character and your uh, reference for the character as well. So once you have that, What's next? Um, well, we are going to have to start posing these different positions over across multiple frames. Um, so we kind of need to start planning that. The thing with posing a 360 character is you don't want to have too many frames uh, creating the rotation for the 360. For instance, between those two poses, you don't need 30 frames between those two poses. No one will ever need to have that much flexibility inside of the pose because it's going to be hardly a millimeter uh, between the, the frames, basically, and the different positions. So um, instead of doing that, we're going to try to make those instances a little bit shorter, uh, but concise and with uh, precise posing. Um, that way we can always uh, rely on the in-betweens to do the job if we want to have something that's a little bit in the middle of those uh, two instances. So we have our front pose right now um, and we want to try to have even numbers between those different poses, meaning that between the front and the quarter front, I want to have uh, the same number of frames that I have between the quarter front and the side and so on. Um, so it's uh, a good idea to not forget that in harmony when we start our scene we start it at frame one not at frame zero so um, usually what i like to do is i'm going to copy this first pose so usually good to do it from the collapse timeline copy that and go and paste it at frame 10. and this is where i'm going to start my uh my posing so I have frame 10 over here, and if I go all the way up to frame 20, I have 10 frames, including those right here. So if I set a keyframe down over here, this would mean that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I reach the middle position, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I can actually go and start that at frame 10. One way that we could do it, if I set down a keyframe over here with the exact same position as on my character. Um, so one thing I can do, if I just add a little drawing here, I could have my frame front at frame 10. And then going further, I could have this one at frame 20, 30, 40, and 50 over here. Um, and this would give me basically a middle position at frame 15. So the middle is going to be the in-between of those two poses. One other way that you could do it as well is by having um, 10 to let's say 21 and then you would have two middle positions and sometimes having two middle positions can be a little bit easier to um, to kind of swap between 
Z depth going from one to the other, but we can do that as well uh, with just the middle method. So we would have our breakdown position here at frame 15. We would have a middle position here at 25, 35, and 45 here, which is giving us a 50 frames to do the entire rotation, which is pretty decent considering that you're gonna have um, a bunch of poses over here to the breakdown and a bunch more over here, which gives you plenty of frames to choose from. So we're gonna keep those numbers in mind and one of the best ways that we can do that right away is to go and set little markers on those frames. So if at frame 10, I want to make sure that I have my front pose, I can go ahead and do that by marking the current frame. I'm just right clicking on the timeline where my playhead is and I'm going to mark that as the front. I don't necessarily need to mark the breakdowns right now if we want to do so. Uh, we can add it later, that's gonna be fine. Um, so frame 20 will be our quarter front. We'll have another color just to di differentiate them. At frame 30, we'll have the side view. Give it a bit of a green, okay. Frame 40 will be our quarterback. And again, just a different color. And finally, frame 50, which will be our back view. So this is just for starting off, really, we are uh, going to be doing really not a 360 right now, but more like a 180. And once we've done the 180, we can actually flip that over to create the rest of the rotation. So I've got all of them here. We can keep that little drawing just to kind of keep in mind where those breakdown positions are going to go. And right now I've got my character and if we want to plan ahead a little bit more you want to activate your reference here and we are going to pose it on each of those frames specifically on top of our character here so um, i'm going to go to frame 10 set down a keyframe here because it's already in the right position and i can move on to frame 20 can use the arrows holding down shift to kind of move that to just about exactly the center. We can actually set those keyframes to be stop motion keyframes once we're done by just clicking on the set stop motion keyframe. We're going to then position the side view just about here. Quarterback. over here and finally the back view which should be just about on top of the front view directly we have all of our positions that we'll use as references to going to pose the character using these references you probably want at this point to bring the reference on top of your character as well um, so by having it on top here, I won't be able to, um, to select my character. I'll just select the reference right away. So the good idea is probably to go and lock this reference. Um, so make sure that you either open it up and click on the little lock here, or you can go inside the drawing layer properties and click on the lock. So you won't be able to select it over here if I click on it it doesn't do anything if you want to adjust and move the uh, peg on top of it you can still select it over here and move it still or adjust by uh, by moving it with the selected peg but you're not going to be able to select it directly from the camera um, so now that we have that it's all fun and good but where is our 
character. We're not seeing him, so how are we supposed to know where exactly this piece is? Well, that's where we're going to get the transparency node. I'm going to go in here. Transparency. We'll add that on our drawing layer. So this is our reference. It's pretty much spot on. So now when we get to this point, we'll get to see both pieces, uh, both the reference and the different pieces of our rig down here. So we'll be able to match these up uh, much more easily than we would just uh, doing it by eye. So we're gonna get started on that in the next video. See you guys soon.